everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the CHOCOBROS. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week, we're going to talk about uh, pre-release experiences. Uh, well, your guys' pre-release experiences, because I was unable to attend. But uh, also predictions for the meta, uh, talk about the Crystal Cup coming up. What cards we expect to see do well early, later. Uh, so, Cody, start off with you. Uh, how was your pre-release weekend? Uh, unfortunately, I was unable to participate in the actual pre-release tournament. Um, but I did get pick up my kit. And uh, I had some okay pulls. Uh, my only legend was Duncan. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, which I, I, I do like that card, but I'm, I'm The art sure is sweet. I will say that is one of my yeah. favorite arts in the set. I really like that kind of gritty <laughs> art style. Yeah, I definitely like the art. Uh, unfortunately, here in like St. Louis area, we were not uh, gifted with the box stopper promo, like the cloud full art. Did um, uh, so. did other people get those? Because I thought we were just supposed to get the Bahamut promos in the pre-release kits. That's what we were supposed to just get. But I've been hearing stories all over the like pretty much all stateside that people have been getting them. It's really random whether you get them or not. It's it was hmm. a distribution error. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And everyone in Tampa got one besides Jamal. Oh, rough. Rough beats Jamal. That's what you get for not showing up for a while. Anyway. And, uh, but it's funny because it's Cloud. It's his favorite character. But he oh, instead, that is kind of funny. He instead got double Bahamut. He got two Bahamuts in his. <laughs> and the rest of us got Cloud plus Bahamut. So. Jeez. <laughs> well, then. Uh, so... Even though you didn't get to play, were there any cards that you pulled that, okay, you might not be excited about them for Constructed, but like you could see doing very well in a pre-release or cards you kind of would have been excited to play or pull? Uh, yeah, I had like the the new like smaller like FF6 stuff, like Umaro, Celeste. I really like those cards for like sealed play. Um, also like the, the FFCC win like backup package. I don't know the, the searcher's name. The four uh, drop. Norse Stalin. Yeah, that one. That that card's very good. <laughs> uh, just because there's a lot of targets for that, so you can ramp backups very quickly. Uh, right, Sherlock, sure Waltrill. Yeah, I definitely would have included a good portion of that if I would have been able to play in the tournament. But yeah. Now, now Sam, you did get to play in the pre-release. Uh, how, did, yeah. how were those experiences? You did the midnight one on Friday and then also an additional on Saturday, right? Yeah, I did. Um, my pull was quite silly. It was really good. I had triple death gaze. I had, um, <laughs> yeah, I had like, a, I, had, I don't remember where my cards were. I think I mixed them up anyway. I had a lot of removal. I had Zidane. Um, did you have a way to give him haste? Did you pull like electric jellyfish too? And just like ch ch get people. I did have electric jellyfish, but I didn't play it. I wasn't in lightning at all. Um, mm. I had rain. Um, that legend was busted. Yeah, it's really good. Um, unfortunately, I had like a very like intense allergy attack leading to round two and decided to drop and go home. Uh -huh. mm, rough. Yeah, so Wait, but we had a good time. I, it was Friday night at midnight oh, or whatever. Night, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually thought I might have been getting sick. Now I feel a little bit under the weather still, but not quite like I did. Um, and Bailey and Jesse and Serena and myself were all there and we we're all having a good time. Um, I think they were like one and one, and like Jesse was 0-2 or something. So it wasn't that big of a deal to leave. Um, right. it did it did stink to leave because I had to miss Opus Seven pre-release to go see uh, Under Oath Anne Berlin. So I was really excited about Opus Eight pre-release. Um, it was really fun, but you not feeling well kind of put a damper on things. Did you get to make up for it on Saturday? Um, we didn't do another pre-release Saturday, but we played another Opus. Um eight constructed deck with um, proxies yeah proxies this time i was actually i only had to have three proxies so that's cool because i filled in a lot of it um the night before with pre-release because we did um we had four kits between us plus we bought two extra kits um so we had six kits total um so that was nice but i would say that like right now i am eight and oh in opus eight uh meta you know, here and it's been really fun. I've been, I've been playing the same deck. Uh, Serena is six and two, having only lost to me twice. Um, so we're having a good time with Opus Eight so far. I can tell you that for sure. Nice, nice. 
Now, uh, what what uh, cards did you see other people playing, or did you play in the pre-release that were like particularly impactful? Um, the Toad was really good. A lot of people are talking about it um, being good. I did have it played against me, but it wasn't very effective because I played in a way that like allowed me to um, just be a like a aggr- more aggressive, so I didn't have to have the cards in my hand. And mm. I had Lebronian, so um, <laughs> that I would pretty interesting. yeah. And, and since it's my turn, like theirs resolves first. So if I ended the turn with just one card in my hand, I could then go to two and um, be just fine. So it wasn't very good against me, but it did seem good, and I would play it. And that I think could transition into constructed playable card. Um, well, that card actually might even be really annoying on turn one. Um, yeah, because it's like pitch your just, hand to play a thing more than you want to, or you know, pitch a card for nothing. So yeah, every, and in every turn. No, for sure. Um, and like, what are they gonna do? Remove it turn one? It's like deal. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, they can get pretty good value out of it if they remove it with like Alexander. It depends. I guess if it's two CP Alexander, sure. But yeah, so they actually come out ahead of that um, maybe, yeah. trade, but it is it does stop them from doing what they want to do, which is set up backups. Right. Um. So that was interesting. Zidane turn one was really good. I expect it to be very good and constructed as well. Um. Probably not as good and constructed because. You know, you build your deck so that you can set up for this. Um, but it's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's a lot... The payoff is a lot higher than Paul. And that's what I would compare it to. Um, and instead of like, taking away done, their yeah. resources, you're getting additional and refilling your hand from the whatever you just did for the CP. Because you pitch two cards, ideally, right? To play Zidane for a water card and then like a fire card or something to give it haste. And then you get your two cards back that you discarded. So it's like you... Yeah, um, yeah. so exactly. You're going to replenish. The other thing that people were complaining a little bit about Arc being um, the Arc TM. Is that what it is? The, uh, Arc oh, Angel. the... Uh, Arc Angel, yeah. Which, which one? The no, one that deals double H- damage? Red, I think. The red one, yeah. HM, yeah. They're saying he's a little bit too busted and limited because you just got hit with three. But, like, I don't know. And, and Sealed, I guess I could kind of agree. Although my my packs and it seems like all my opponents' packs were just littered with removal. There's so much removal in the set. There's a ton um, of removal. Right. So I don't really think it was that busted. I had it played against me, and I just killed it right away. In fact, I let it I let it hit me once, even on purpose, because I didn't want to <laughs> overpay to kill it. And I was just like, whatever, I'll kill it next turn. Um. So I don't think it's busted and sealed, but it is pretty good, and certainly when you're playing draft, when you can pick up multiple of them and then hate draft some of the removal, it probably becomes a little bit better. Um, but that was another card to look out for in limited for sure. That could transition into constructed play. Um, so the big ones were definitely Toad was was pretty good from what I was seeing. Uh, could, could transition. The Archangel was pretty good. Could I could see transition. Um, Rain was okay. I played it. I think it's going to transition better in constructed than it will in limited. Um, again, being that in constructed, you're actually probably playing less removal than you are in limited. Um, I think yeah, at least 50, 50% of my deck was removal in, the lim- in my limited pool. And like in constructed, it's like maybe I have nine summons or something like that. Right. Um, so I think he'll see play um, cards that were underwhelming. I heard Ardlin was good for Arden was good for some people. Um the deck, the the games I saw him played, he wasn't that impressive. Um, but I could see him also transitioning to constructed better than most people are imagining. Um, a lot of the cards just seem very powerful and limited. Could be transitioning death death gaze. I had no idea that card was a um, unique card, which makes sense because the oh, six true. drop is also uh, the, the the category six one's also unique. Um, and I knew that. So oh, so you can't play multi. Okay, that's actually relevant it is not only is it relevant but it's it's maybe unnecessary i don't know maybe the card would be too good without it i don't know i was really excited for it but realizing it's like i would probably literally only play one in my constructed deck now i 100 like in the proxy term I, I would have cheated and i didn't even look like i just oh monster yeah removal removal <laughs> i i did that yeah. in sealed actually yeah i played two of them exiled two people's thing and then i was like wait i can't even do that so yeah. then we figured it out we fixed it but yeah so that De- but death gaze was good too also in limited um the four drop backup that goes and gets the fcc backup 
um, is going to probably revolutionize the mono win deck more than it needed. Um, <laughs> you remember when you used to play like the um, I one deck? Yeah. Remember when you used to play the the four drop backup that was against the other two drop backup? The Kai Santa package. Yeah. The Kai Santa package just so you hit your win backups. Like imagine that only, but now you're just getting good backups. Yeah. Now you have three right? different targets. Each has a different job depending on what you, you, the, your hand needs. Yeah. You can already right, have one of the all... other two drops. You can find a searcher for Yuri and Chalinka. Like it is fantastic. Yeah. I was actually testing over Discord today with uh with Zaim, and it was he he was playing that package, and it was like really really good actually um mm. just being able to go get Alaria too is like pretty good because if you already <clears> have <throat> all the two cp backups in hand you can just you don't have to go get those and you can you know right curve so out just that, the same that was also pretty good and and limited um i don't think that there were any like bombs i think i heard zadane carried people through but again like i think that maybe People's... Until your opponent has lightning card uh, Jintanai or Janai or whatever his name is. Well, <laughs> right, right, and that card's not even that hard, right? Is, is it a rare or a heroic? I think it's a heroic. Okay, well, I think there's three Chaos Walker. Or Chaos Walkers are common, so in this set, so it's a rare Janai. Okay, yeah, so like you could you're running into that constantly, possibly, which is a blowout. Um, not to mention that Chaos Walker is a common, um, so it's really not that big of a deal. I think that people who feel like they breeze through sealed probably honestly had a soft tournament. Um, right. If right. you if your if your tournament felt really easy to you, honestly, then your local scene is probably not as good at limited and needs some practice because the games are actually really interactive in Opus Eight, from what I've seen. And yeah, like Zidane, Archangel, like these cards that you think are bombs just weren't actually that great. Um, are even Arden can be death case very easily. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like the, the format's really balanced and it was a lot of fun. And I am looking forward to transition to constructed um, from where we are right now. So for the stepping stone to constructed uh, draft is obviously a big topic these days because we know the crystal cups are going to include it at least in some capacity um, as, at what we, we don't know how many yet, but it, at least some, uh, you were talking about there were a lot of bombs, and you said, like, or sorry, a lot of removal compared to mm -hmm. bombs. You said you even went so far as to say 50%. Might, was that exaggeration, or was that about accurate? Um, If you don't include, like, backups, it's it's accurate. Like, it's definitely accurate. Like, so how I was playing th three Chaos Walkers, uh, three Death Gaze. Um, honestly, I don't remember the other ones, but I had some other removal as well. How do you think the draft experience is going to be for Opus 8? Because there is, it's probably going to be fun, but there is a lot of removal. Do you think it's going to be hard for people to close games and a lot of them will go to time because of that? Or not time, uh, deck out, sorry. Uh, because people won't uh, oh, yeah, have yeah, things on yeah, the game, field. <laughs> yeah, games will, definitely, games will definitely go to deck out. Um, you know, it'll be hard to be able to play around things. Like, like even like Death Machine, um, I think could be pretty good in limited probably. Um well, there's not a lot of cards that synergize super well with it, but you know, like there's no zapped, for example, like you could have in constructed. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I could see it going to deck out. That's not necessarily a problem though. Like that's just one of the mechanics of the game. Well, plus it's and like you, I mean that means you, you have a long, grindy, it, yeah. fun game. So yeah, no. uh, the four the four CP eight K um, that mills two and then if they're the mm -hmm. same draw as a card is pretty playable because of that type of thing. There's a lot of seven Ks too in the format. Mm -hmm. So having an eight K that actually just makes your opponent uh, one step, possibly two steps closer to losing. Um, seems pretty good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to drafting way more than I thought I was mm -hmm. and way more than even until we had this conversation, I thought about the, and so I started thinking about the limited pool. Like it was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now, Cody, what about you? Are you looking forward to the draft a little more than, than before? Or based uh, off what you've seen so far? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I definitely enjoyed uh, Opus 6 draft, though. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Opus 7, I really didn't get to play much in. Uh, but no, I mean, I think it'll definitely, like, your like your top cut players will definitely, like, be your, like, "Quote unquote top cut players," if that makes sense. Like, right, right. I think dra I think drafting takes a lot of skill, and like any like limited or sealed format, anything like that. I think that takes a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, so you're not you're still can, not a fan. Hopefully, I can make it. But yeah, I'm not. Opus I'm not a fan. Somewhat acceptable <laughs> because of the. Yeah, so. no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of it, but uh, I'm willing to t- try it out. And obviously, I'm going to multiple Crystal Cups, so I'm gonna have to deal with it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of draft as a constructed man, uh, oh Sam, you're on mute still. I was say you know you know you can draft Ice Cody. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm there's a, to. there's a pl- there's a lot of Shivas in this format. Uh, yeah, and they are very good. That yeah, was so, that was so a card you, I forgot to mention earlier. Draft actually. Shiva, okay, bud. So yeah. <laughs> don't, don't don't dread drafting too much. <laughs> Shiva Toad, let's go. No, so yep. all right. So then you obviously are leaning heavily more on constructed. Uh, what do you think people are gonna build first, and like what have you been kind of gravitating towards? You don't have to give us like your super secret tech, but just in general, what do you think you uh, what do you expect to see from the meta kind of early early on? Uh, I expect to see a lot of safe picks, like like some basic Earth Wind. <laughs> And is this going through, I guess we can say going through the Crystal Cup, like from say now to after the first Fire Crystal Cup here in Tampa, we'll say that time period. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to be playing it safe. I expect a lot of Earth Wind, a lot of Wind Water, a lot of Mono Wind. I think Mono Wind will probably have the most changes, um, especially with like the FCC backup packages. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Mono Water has got to be pretty good because that new Leviathan's so nutty. I, th- I think it's good, but I think water's also got. It's, uh, the summons are pretty tight in water. Like, there's like 15 good summons to choose from. I think from, I'd so. rather play that one than a bounce <laughs> Leviathan, right? Because it just kills their guy instead of shrinking it. Or instead of bouncing it. But, I don't know. It can be it can be pretty relevant against Astrola. Yeah. The um, shrinking, you mean? Yeah. Because it I've kills Astrola. I've, I've grown to like that card more than I thought. And same with Nicholas. Like, I think that card's better than I originally thought, what, too. What, what card? Nicholas. Nicole. Nicholas. Or Nicole, whatever it is. Is, is, it the water, is it the water card? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nicole, yeah. I forget. Nicole, so, yeah. Enters the field, chooses up to four cards, they lose a thousand power for each Like player. a mini, oh. mini Cognoso. Okay. I... But you can, like, just use it to, like, put pressure on your opponent. A lot, like, a lot of times people used to, when they were playing Cognoso, they would, like, wait to Scholar and, like, double Cognoso, and, like, that would win the game in the long run. You but can just the, do it and push. Yeah. yeah, the 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 play lately has been that you should be more aggressive with Mono Water, so you're attacking with Layla Vikings and stuff mm-hmm. after you play your Cognazzo, so you have the force these traits. And that just is another way that you can keep doing that. So it's it's probably pretty good. No, yeah, I, and actually, actually to piggyback off what Sam was saying about being more aggressive, uh, not just with water, but more in general, I expect a lot of fire um, to be coming out the gate, especially with the Archangel HM. I expect that's mainly the deck I expect at Tampa. So now, do you think that's going to be more of kind of the mid rangey versions before? Or is it going to be kind of an adaptation of the like wall fire aggro just with the addition of like more haste effects and like Archangel HM or something? I'm pretty much just expecting a turn one Archangel into a Sage <laughs> or Red Mage swing twice and then pass to your opponent. I'm expecting that. So not worried about it, but just. I, I I'm not gonna be planning to build like a like a slower deck that like takes a long time to get set up. So so here's the question for you then, Cody. You say you didn't care how big fire forwards are, but do you care if they hit you twice? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And and, so, and if so the fire may gets bigger, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it, and it gets bigger when it's swinging. But <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> walked right into it. Uh, but yeah. I think it's right. going to be a very aggressive format. I, I think I agree. Uh, I definitely agree with the wind. Um, I, I may be you know, a little biased because it's the first thing I gravitated towards with the FFCZ package and all that. But uh, So, Sam, what about you? What do you kind of expect people to go towards early? Uh, well, I think like the safer decks, uh, kind of what, what Cody said, um, the better decks might be somewhat aggressive. The best decks will probably be like Mono Lightning, though. Um, it just got a lot of new tools. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of new tools. I it's really like Janai, cool. dude. Like, I don't know if it's yeah. as good as I think it is, but... Oof. It's really good. Jake's also really good. Um, From State and then... Yeah, uh, Jake Lee, actually. Um, <laughs> those decks... And then, like, Mono Wind probably got the biggest upgrade. And if you're looking for a deck that's, like, very consistent, probably just play that deck. I don't know. Like, Fina's really good mm-hmm. i can see playing fina in uh 
Wind Water too. I could see playing Fina and Earth Wind. I could see playing see Mono Wind. It's just a good card. Earth Ice with Ronella. Uh, sorry, not Earth Ice. Sorry, uh, Wind Ice. <laughs> yeah, I I probably wouldn't play that, but. Yeah, I, just... I had the spicy like tech of just like putting three or no in my deck because Sherlock can cast whatever you want and just like live the dream. But if I was, I, doing it's that, probably would... not correct. Yeah, I would probably like want to include Sephiroth somewhere. So mm -hmm. then you want to include Zidane. Now you're just like a whole bunch of synergies in that direction, and before you know it, you end up more like ice than anything. So right. Yeah, no, I expect basically what you guys are saying i think the warrior of light people gravitate towards as well because it's pretty on the nose just like oh hey i can spam span standard units for a while uh everyone's been kind of buzzing about that i haven't seen anybody talk too much about palum uh i know we're hyped about it or we were anyway i still am i wonder if that's because people are figuring out it's really good and they're just not want to talk about it <laughs> or uh <laughs> um I, i've seen talk about the toad being really annoying like you said it wasn't uh sealed but like it's kind of yeah. like the old like uh, Buckaboo Gambit, where like, what do you want to do? Like, what like changing the way they play, and or like turn one Zidane, like it changes just how you need to pitch your hand and like sequence your plays. Which I've had discussions about this with other players before, but I think that while CP efficiency is like key, like so maybe you don't want to play a three CP on turn one. It's like the the advantage you get from changing how your opponent's deck functions can be pretty important. Yeah, like what if you, what if you play Buckaboo and Toad on turn one? <laughs> I mean, so that's, your opponent goes to seven cards. If they try to play a backup, right? So they go seven, so right? So they and play then they a two, down. they go down to yes. five. Five, and then three. this card two, three. And then they have to play another two to go down to one. That's, like, pretty good for them, though. If they have two two-drop backups, <clears throat> you're probably losing that game. It gets really awkward so. if they have a four, though, because... And that's what they want, like, if they have to play a four. Cause then, yeah, like, if their backup is the win backup that searches for another one, it becomes a little bit more awkward for them. Yeah, something like that. It would be whatever <laughs> leaves them on two cards or zero cards or three cards. Like, whatever doesn't leave them just on one would be right. really awkward. Right. Hmm. An interesting one. Cody, you going to do that now? You going to go build, like, a weird new version of Turbo with monsters? Nope. Uh, I will not mess with Buckaboo. That's not Tempo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, play the, I'll, I'll play the Toad. Must be Tempo-wise until the end. I'll, I'll play the Toad side by side with the Flan, but I won't. I, I don't mess with Buckaboo. <laughs> I don't <guess. laughs> that's fair uh so one card i've been curious about uh the fact it's restricted to your turn makes it significantly worse i think because you want to dull freeze things on your opponent's turn to get kind of two turns out of it but how do you feel about the new shiva because i think that's a pretty powerful card that people may want to build with especially being able to search it with dabblas yeah i definitely like that card i don't think it's a big deal that you have to use it on your turn um, just because I use Orphan on my turn anyhow. I guess so. it's more aggressive, right? It'd be more aggressive yeah. build so you can get through. Yeah. I don't think it's like a three of or anything like that. Um, but even using it early game, like say if they're rushing forwards and you're still trying to set up, like mm -hmm. oh true, you yeah, can play, just like, play that off four backups and like you get a second to like draw two more cards and Does it, it freezes them, right? Dull mm -hmm. freeze three things and they can be monsters too. So like you can do unactivated monsters also, which is nice, like a green dragon type thing. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely like that card. I don't think it's a three of. I think people are kind of over. That card seems like it could be better in like a water deck, uh, like with Aiku. So like, you have access to it early and then play it later. Still, um, I less so with a Jito. I mean, you can still get it back with a Jito, but like, water ice could be actually like a good tempo deck. Mm -hmm. Um, you have the Garnet, the three cost Garnet that like uh, goes and gets a one drop, so you can like bounce her things to like tempo them out. And then when they finally play some stuff down, you just dole freeze everything and then keep attacking them with your Layla Vikings. I definitely want to revisit the uh, kind of JFB Water Ice Yuna aggro deck. That was like one of my favorite decks, but it was just really hard to play with what the way the meta was. And I think Valfour is still going to be a card. Uh, and like Dataluma, Cactuar is still going to be a thing. But maybe I'll be able to, you know, slip through anyway. Yeah. But uh, so those are cards we're seeing now. Uh, as we've noticed in the past few sets some cards get a lot better as time goes on because people figure out how to build properly decks get tuned and tweaked what are some cards you could see doing a lot better in the future as opposed to now once people have had more time with it again don't have to get rid of any super spicy tech but uh cody start with you uh so the first one i believe it's death machine mm -hmm. that's um, probably one of the ones i would say too because it's interesting yeah, it's anyone who's played magic 
and knows what smokestack is or porphyry nodes. Yeah, this is just a card that I feel like uh, something that I wouldn't normally play, uh, but I feel like somebody that's just like I feel like Sam could pull off like some kind of deck with this and make mm -hmm. it work. <laughs> like I don't know if you... Sam's just better with monsters. So, uh... <laughs> But hopefully I'm not giving anything too spicy, but like Zemusing, like little tiny forwards like Zapped, or like even Katesith, like onto the board and then just breaking them, like just seems good. Right, right. Which I think is a pretty, you know, obvious inclusion with that. It's like, huh, what can yeah. I do to break parity? Yeah. Uh, are there any other ones kind of jump to the forefront of your mind or is that kind of... Uh, oh yeah, there's loads. Uh, <laughs> I think this Onion Knight, um, I haven't heard a whole lot of people talking about it, except for Adam Duncan. I believe it was Adam Duncan. Today I listened to the RVA podcast, and he was the first person I heard that was pretty hyped on it. I and I really like does. That I'm, I'm looking it up, up right now. now. <laughs> okay. uh, so, it, I didn't know Vivi was a card. I didn't know that we had a Vivi. Oh, I, I was going to say Vivi's one, I think. Once people figure out a good build of like the nine, like Fire Water or something like that, that card could be nuts. Yeah, uh, I like. So, oh, wait, so real quick, I'll, I'll read on you tonight. Uh, so it's 4 CPE X Burst, 8K. <laughs> Uh, forward. When it enters the field, uh, choose up to two backups you control. If you've received three points of damage or more, activate them. If you receive five, activate all backups instead. And that entire effect is on the X-Burst. Huh. This yeah, that card could be really good. So it's a 2 CP AK, usually. Uh, I guess not necessarily early, but usually. Yeah. Especially with how aggressive people are building these days. I could buy that. Yeah, I like yeah, that card. Big fan of that. And then maybe uh, if somebody can figure out something spicy with this Water Ninja, <laughs> one that like, takes a forward, I'd like to see a deck run that. Um, but those are probably my top three, like, quote-unquote, under-the-radar cards, I guess. Yeah, I think if I had to pick, like, three, I would agree Death Machine's probably up there. Uh, I really like the Earth Monster, the uh, Luminous Puma. I feel like someone will figure out a good engine for that. Obviously, Mira is like the first card you jump to if you've listened to any threads talk about the card. But uh, I definitely is think Lulu, there's gonna Lulu be... the second one because you get to go get a Lulu backup. Yeah, I mean that too. Uh, like, there's a bunch of ways to kind of loop it around in various colors, and you could get like Gao specials back is the the first thing I think of with like Water Earth monsters. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that, but it'll take some tweaking to figure out what cards are actually benefiting the most from it. Uh, so, <laughs> monsters, basically. Also, I kind of want to see this uh, uh, <coughs> kind of Garland taxing deck appear. Like, so um, the new Garland 9, some of the old tax effects. Uh, where's the other one? Like Time Mage, Palum, all that kind of stuff to like just make your opponent do nothing. I, I don't know if there's a combination there of just redundant enough effects to do that, but. Uh, I'll, do my, I'll do my best to make you. <clears throat> yeah, right. <laughs> Time walk that deck. All right, Sam, what about you? Um, I think that the stronger cards in the deck are Alphanod. Um, oh, that's, yeah. That's my pet card right now. Shake, Jenea, um, Lebronian, Death Machine, uh, Lael. <laughs> I can see, like, Archangel I TT being Lael. very good. Um, Wait, you mean Ezreal, I, right? Sure, yeah, it does look like that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I like knocked quite a bit. Um, True, forgot about that card. Warrior Light, uh, the wind card, you know, to like play a bunch of Vikings and untap stuff seems very, very good. Um, Alexander is already a perfect fit for the wind deck. Like, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, and people will break Dark Fina given enough time mm -hmm. um, and giving it enough. Scale Toads not seen play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lava Spider is better than people think. Um, people keep saying, oh, you're just trading. You just trade and your guy's going to die anyway. But it's like, yeah, dude, you're, you're trading, trading like your one, your one CP and two CP guys for like big guys. It's quite, quite good, actually. Um, mostly that's it. I think that uh, Freya is probably really good. Um, Probably the best water card, in my opinion, actually, besides Luna Freya. So Freya and Luna Freya are my <laughs> top two water cards for the set, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there could be some monster decks with Medine would be really good, too. Uh, Ark would be pretty good in monster decks. Um, 
uh, Veritas of the Dark is excellent. Uh, this set is going to completely change the face of title um, because the three, the, there, there were four strong title decks, in my opinion. Um, number one was Final Fantasy XII. Um, number two was probably Final Fantasy IX. Number three was Final Fantasy XIV. And then number four was Final Fantasy VII. <clears throat> Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VII, XIV, and IX got insane boosts. I would now put them in the order of Final Fantasy IX is the best, Final Fantasy VII second, fourteen is third, and twelve has been knocked all the way down to the fourth best, even probably tier two. Um, yeah, I I think this completely changes it. It brought FCC to be a, actually a competitive title deck, in my opinion. Um, it helps six a great deal. Um, like I know that they, they they've already stated that they don't design around title, but my god, did this <laughs> this set looks like it was designed to help title and it actually shook up potter uh popper quite a bit too i mean death uh not death machine but um chaos walker becoming a common is kind of a big deal um them getting more shivas for the ice decks is also pretty big deal um and then like archangel uh hm being a rare um really helped fire because i don't even think fire was a consideration for popper prior to um this set but but archangel um golem lava spider like these cards are excellent cards um and will probably shake up the meta for popper as well i I know popper's not a huge format most places but we are having a tournament here a team tournament here where popper will be very relevant i have a Um, feeling i'll be playing popper for it yeah the 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 one card i will say that i didn't mention was uh charlotta but that's probably because i think everyone knows that card is very good yeah, I mean, um, if you don't think it's good, I urge you to put three of it in your next deck and come back. Yeah, it's it's very, very good. So those are the cards that I think are really good. Um, I'll say Lebroni in a second time. I love that card. It's <laughs> just a very, very Sam card to be. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not good, but it feels pretty good. At F5, it's pretty steep, but I, there's ways to make it nicer, so... Yeah, the, the card that I'm most interested in seeing if it's good, though, is Lid. I really want to see if Lid is good. I know um, one of the Wells of Bacher brothers has been hyping that card up from shit, uh, chatter I've seen. Alejandro um, is pretty high on it, too. Uh, so, I think yeah, Jeff I could see that. rated it pretty high as well. Although he had other opinions I didn't agree with, so maybe we don't. You know. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Death Gaze is a bad card. Yeah, it's not a it's not a bad card. Um, yeah, there's some very uh, Aerith is busted. I guess I should probably <laughs> mention that. But again, you were saying cards that people will figure out eventually. I think this is already right. been figured out. Aerith right, is right. freaking things very things that good. will be better the more time people are given with it. Yeah, yeah. That was our kind of recap of pre-release while we prepare. Can't wait to get my hands on the real cards. Uh, start brewing it up and see what this spicy release weekend has in store. But until next week, I was Zach Burrell. I'm Sam Snight Prime. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.